Hello everyone, I'm back again and today's video is going to be my May wrap up and my June TBR. I read a total of seven things within the month of May. I'm actually quite happy about that. Didn't think I was going to read them all, but there was quite a lot of good releases that came out and I was lucky enough to get my hands on a few of them. So to start off the month of May, I read Snow Like Ashes by Sarah Rush. This one I gave a five stars on Goodreads. I love it. I'm actually thinking of doing a review on this one. I'm not quite sure yet, but I really did enjoy it. I had so many emotions and feelings that were similar to when I read Throne of Glass, but it's nothing like that. It just felt so familiar in that sense, like the fantasy aspect of it. But other than that, the storyline is nothing like Throne of Glass, but it was just so good. I really enjoyed it. I love the whole plot in it. The secrets, the world, the way that, she, that Sarah had wrote the world was amazing. How all the different kingdoms and realms, I guess, were all split across this continent. And how they all were like a power play and secrets and deception. It was just so good. I really enjoyed it. And I gave that one a five stars and it deserved it. And this is the second book I started reading in May. And that was End of Days. It's part of the Penryn in the End of Days series by Se Suzanne E. Sorry. And, oh, so you probably even see the rest of the series over here. I have uh, Angel Fall and World After, and this is the third book in the series, the final one, unfortunately. But it was really good. Another good book that I read this month, and I gave this one a five stars on Goodreads, and I wrote a short little review on Goodreads too, because I was just so excited after I finished reading it. Oh, uh, it, was, it was such a good book to wrap up the series. I wish there was more. I love Penryn and Raffi's adventures. That was just so good. And uh, I, I really enjoyed this one. And if you haven't read this series yet, you really should. I highly recommend it and you will not be disappointed. The third book I got to read after that was The Air by Kira Cast. This is part of the Selection series. The Selection series with America, which is the main character in that one, is done. The first three books are about her. This moves on to many years later where it's her daughter who is now uh, holding a selection. And she's... it's... I had some mixed things about this one. Now, I did enjoy it. It was good. She's the main character in this one, Edlin. Edlin? Edlin? She is more feisty. Um, I kind of thought she was quite a spoiled brat and wasn't exactly a positive way of thinking of her. She was the main character I kind of got used to at the end, but she was a character that, if she was a side character, I would automatically hate and wish that she was killed off or went away or something because she was just really irritating. As I went on, I'd grown to kind of like her. I mean, I kind of got where she was coming from afterwards, but uh, I don't know. I will still continue on with the series. I gave this one a four stars on Goodreads. I just, I don't know, it's just not as good as the selection, I think. The ending is what really did it towards halfway through was what really got me into liking it and into the story. Unfortunately, the beginning of it was quite slow and at times it did feel quite unrealistic, but I'll still see where this goes. I mean, I'm still going to continue reading it. I just, I don't know. I still prefer the beginning part of America's story to her daughters. But who knows? It's still early. It's only the first book and the second part. But yeah, I read that one this month. Next one I'm so excited. I got my hands out and got to read. And that was A Court of Thorns and Roses by Sarah J Maas. Now, I love Sarah J Maas. She is amazing. And I just love her writing and her work, and I'm so happy I got to read this one this month. And I got to read this one just before my birthday, so I was so excited, and it was such a good book. But I didn't realise it wasn't a young adult. I didn't read that much about it, I just knew the general as general gist of it. That it's a spin-off of Beauty and the Beast, um, that the main character is called Freya, and there's a character called Tamlin in it, but other than that... I didn't want to get too much into it and know so much about it because I just enjoy Sarah, Sarah Master's books just so much more without knowing anything because her writing's just so amazing. But, oh, I loved it so much and I'm so happy I didn't know much about it because it was so good. My first retelling it I got to read, it was so good. It's not a young adult at all. It's a new adult novel, just to be clear. It is new adult. I don't think the young adult novels would have this kind of content in it. But it was pretty good. I liked it. I gave it 5 stars on Goodreads. I can't wait for the sequel. Hopefully there is going to be a sequel because there needs to be after that. 
but it was amazing. I loved it. I feel like I want to do a review on this one, so maybe I will. And this cover is just gorgeous. I just, even the back of it, I mean, look at the girl and the crown. Isn't that amazing? It's so creepy. Right now, it's got a bookmark in it because I've gave it to my mum to read because I'm trying to make her read it. But I love it. Isn't it pretty? The hardback is just gorgeous. I really enjoyed that one. And I can't wait for Queen of Shadows. Oh my god. I'm thrown a glass off. But A Court of Thorns and Roses was amazing. I'm happy I got to read that. And yeah, that's about the fourth book I read this month. The fifth book I got to read this month was part of my TBR Jar Challenge. And that was The Short Second Life of Brie Tanner by Stephanie Meyer. I had this one on my TBR pile for a long time. Forgot basically what happened, so I had to reread it again for my challenge, which was to read something that had less than 200 pages, I think, if I remember correctly. And I chose this one so I can finally get it out the way. It can go with the other series, the Twilight series that I have up there. And I gave it a three stars on Goodreads. I knew I wasn't going to like it, not as much as what I like the Twilight series, even though that has gone down in my excitement over the years. But yeah, it was still good. I mean, I uh, Brie Tanner was kind of an interesting storyline to read from, considering we, we, if you've read Eclipse you know her ending unfortunately, even in the movies, it's quite sad, but it was, it was, it was alright I guess, I uh, gave it a three stars, I mean, I've finished reading it, that's all I got to say, I've, at least I finished it and it can go back on the my shelf. Now a couple of things I read this month weren't exactly novels to say, they were uh, comics or graphic novels if you'd like. But my brother went to this thing called Free Comic Book Day in the city and he brought back a bunch of free comic books for my sister and I to look at and well mainly for my sister and I kind of sneaked off with this one so I got to read Guardians of the Galaxy. I don't know if this is actually part of the whole Guardians of the Galaxy series. It's just one little comic. Um, but it was actually pretty good. I quite like it and this is how funny Guardians of the Galaxy is, I want to read more. I mean, it's even got Venom in this one. So it was actually really quite cool and it got me excited and after I read that one, I kind of borrowed from my brother Civil War. As Civil War is coming out next year by Marvel, by the Marvel Universe Entertainment Company. So I said okay and I read it. It was really good. I'm so happy that I did. I loved it and it's kind of got me on the comic book spin of things. I want to read more and this is uh I love it. I can't wait for the movie now and uh, it's just so cool. I mean look at the art in this. It's so pretty. I love it. It was so much fun reading this. I even try and show you some of the art pages. Where is it? Epic Battle. <laughs> Look at that. Oh, Iron Man versus Captain America right there. This is so good. Oh, I'm so happy that my brother let me borrow this. And yeah, I think I gave this one a four stars on Goodreads. So if you guys want to read some Marvel comics, you know, Civil War's coming out next year, try and give this one a spin. Now that completes all the books that I completed reading in May. There are a few books that I'm going to roll over in June. And the first one, you could probably guess from my last couple of videos, is Dead Ever After by Charlene Harris. I still haven't been able to read any more of this because just so many other good books came out this month and other books that I found to read. I haven't finished this but I'm going to still continue reading it. Yeah, so I'm going to be reading this in June. As I said, I'm still on a comic book high that I was, I've was i been looking for this comic book for ages and I couldn't find it anywhere. And wherever it was available online, it was so expensive. They were looking for like nearly $100 to $120 for it. I didn't want to spend that much. But my friend took me out to the city for my birthday and I found this gem in one of the comic book stores. It was Pulp Fiction Comics. And it's Secret Wars. All I know is that it's supposed to be Nick Fury's secret task force of superpowered people. And I guess in humans as well, you can say. And it features Daisy Johnson as one of the main leads. And I, get, I think it's her adventures starting from the after S.H.I.E.L.D. has fallen and Hydra has invaded S.H.I.E.L.D. And then now regrouping to create something called Hammer, I think, which is a secret project of Nick Fury's. And while he's watching over other task force, she's operating one of them herself. And it leads to her, I think, finally being the director of S.H.I.E.L.D. This is only volumes 
1 to 16. There is still 17 to 28. I don't have those. I'll probably have to collect those afterwards. But I'm excited to read this omnibus. And oh, I got it for a, for a steal of 57 bucks I bought it for. That's so much better than the 100 to 120 that I saw online. I mean, that is ridiculous. And I actually got it in my hand and I'm so excited to stop reading it. So now's the time to do my TBR jar. So without any waiting, I'm going to do it. Let's see. Let's shake it out first a bit. Take off the lid. Oh, oh, I think I already got one. Okay. Let's put the lid back on there so I don't lose it. Oh, lid won't go on. Lid won't go on. Alright. Now that I put the lid on, let's see. Read a book without a person on the cover. There it is, there's my challenge, if you can see that. It says, read a book without the person on the cover. I think it might be a bit hard to read because it's in green. Um, ooh, let's see. I'm going to take a look and I'll be right back. Wow, this is going to be a tricky one. Turns out it was actually a lot easier than what I thought it would be. This one was on the top of one of my TBR piles. And it is Shadow and Bone by Leah Bardugo. I haven't read this series yet. This is the first book. Had it for a little while. I don't have the other books in the series, unfortunately, so I have to get my hands on those at some point. But it has no faces or no people on the cover, so I think this qualifies for that challenge. So this is going to be my TBR jar challenge for June. I'm actually looking forward to that. Ooh, this is actually quite a pretty book too. So that's going on my TBR pile. So that concludes the video. I hope you guys enjoyed this one. I want to know what you guys are planning to read in June and what books you like that I read in May. I want to talk to some people about those because I'm actually quite happy with what I read. And I read a lot more than what I think thought I would. So I'll see you guys next time. Don't forget to subscribe, give me a thumbs up, uh, check out my social links below and have a good day guys. Bye.